जय राधा माधव कुंज
We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, Chapter 4, Verse number 12. Shri Shuka Uvacha. Nama Parasmai Purushaya Bhuyase Sadudbhava Stana Niroda Lilaya Grihita Shakti Tritayaya Dehinam Antar Bhavaya Nupalakshya Vartmane Namo Parasmai Purushaya Bhuyashe Sadhudbhava Stana Niroda Lilaya Grihita Shakti Tritataya Dehinam Antar Bhavayanu Palaksha Vartmane Shri Shuka Uvacha Nama Parasmai Purushaya Bhuyashe Sad Udbhava Stana Niroda Lilaya Grihita Shakti Tritataya Dehinam Antar Bhavayanu Palaksha Vakmane Namaparasmai Purushaya Bhuyasem Namaparasmai Purushaya Bhuyasem 
Как Вишну, он входит в каждое сотворенное материальное тело. Форм... тело. В форме Гарба Дакашая Вишну, он входит в каждую вселенную. А в форме Кшира Дакашая Вишну, тело каждого живого существа. Господь Шри Кришна – источник всех Вишну Став. И потому его называют здесь пара Кумана. А в Бхагавадгите, 15-18, Пуршоттама, он полное целое, а Пуршу Аватары – его полная экспансия. Бхакти-йога – это единственный метод, с помощью которого человек может познать Бога. Поскольку философам эмпирикам и йога-мистикам не дано постичь личность Бога, его называют Анупалакшия Вакснаты – владыкой непостижимого пути – Бхакти-йога. Om Magyanita Brandasya Kanyanjana Shavakaya Chakshur Milikandina Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobishtam Sapitam Yeta Bhutale Svayam Rupaka Dhamayam Dadati Svapadantikam Pandiyam Shri Guru Shri Yeta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shya Shri Rupam Sakrachatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sarvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lavita Shri Shaka Nitam Shya Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So Sukadeva Goswami is beginning his prayers. Maharaj Parikshit had asked him to describe how Krishna creates the material world. Махарадж Парикшит спросил его, как Господь Кришна создал, создает материальный мир. So before he begins to describe how this all takes place, he, he begins by offering prayers to the Supreme Lord. И перед тем, как начать рассказывать об этом, он возносит молитву Верховному Господу. Without being empowered by the Lord, we cannot do anything. Если Господь не даст нам сил и знаний, чтобы We ourselves are powerless without the blessings of the Lord. So Tsukadeva Goswami is describing uh, the, the Lord as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Supreme Person. And for the purpose of creation, he accepts the three modes of nature. Of course, the material nature is Krishna's energy. It's under his control. Maya Jakshina Prakriti Suyate Sachara Chara. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, material nature is under his direction. It's not independent. И Господь Бхагавадгите говорит, что материальная природа находится под Его контролем, она не самостоятельна. И материальная энергия, она персонифицирована в мать, как мать Дурга. И Шрила Вьясадев, когда он сидел в медитации, контемплируя Лорда, At that time, he saw the material energy personified under the full control of the Lord. 
осознал, что материальная энергия находится под полным контролем Господа. So the relationship of the material energy to the Lord is described to be like a shadow to the object. И отношение материальной энергии по отношению к Господу описывается как we тень can, и объект, uh, из которого эта тень исходит. We can see shadows on the floor. The shadows are all under the direction. When the object moves, then the shadow moves. The shadow is not independent. Мы все видим наши тени на полу, и когда объект какой-то двигается, то тень следует за ним, она не может двигаться самостоятельно. So material nature is not independent of Krishna. It acts only under his direction. So we may say, well, does that mean when there's an earthquake or when there's a tsunami, Krishna caused this? Actually, yes. Krishna is the cause of all causes. На самом деле это так, потому что Кришна причина всех причин. We, we people then wonder, oh, what kind of person is Krishna? He's so cruel because he's so much suffering, so much pain. И люди удивляются, что это за личность Кришна? Он так жесток, столько страданий. We should understand this is the material world. This is not the place for eternal happiness. Мы должны понимать, что это материальный мир, это не, ища... не э, место для вечного счастья. The nature of the material world was described by Krishna also in the Bhagavad Gita. Мама пайчат пунерджанма дукала яма шасвата напнованти махатмана самсадим параннамрита. Krishna describes that the great souls who are yogis in devotion They never come back to this world because they know this world to be a temporary place of misery. И Кришна Бхагавадгите описывает эту материальную природу. Он говорит о том, что йоги и бхакти никогда и преданные никогда не возвращаются в этот мир, потому что он полон страданий. We are trying to be happy here in this place, but we cannot find eternal happiness. Мы пытаемся быть счастливыми в этом месте, но мы никогда не найдем здесь вечного счастья. You cannot find water in the desert. Вы не найдете воду в пустыне. In the same way we're trying to, but we're trying to find eternal pleasure, eternal enjoyment here in this material world. Но мы же старая пытаемся увидеть вечное удовольствие, вечное наслаждение в этом материальном мире. So Krishna arranges this material world to have three natures. There's the mode of goodness, passion, and ignorance. And to control this material nature, Krishna uh, uh, arranges for three of his incarnations in the form of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. These are the three guna avatars. Avatar means one who comes down, one who descends. It's not like they became God, but they came from the spiritual world. They were always God. Это не тот, кто стал Богом, это тот, кто пришел из духовного мира, то есть они были Богом. So Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva take their supervising the three different modes of nature. И Брахма, Шива и Вишну, они контролируют три различных гуны материальной природы. The three modes of nature are like three colors, just like if you're an artist and you paint So you can have you start with three colors, red, blue, and yellow. And from the three colors you can mix any other color you want. Mm. In printing, when they print pictures, when they print our books and so on, they use it, that technique. They, they do color separations and they separate the pictures into three colors and then they will print one color, then the second color, then the third color. 
And the result is you get a very colorful picture. И когда печатают, например, наши книги, то они делят картинки в этих книгах на, на несколько подгрупп. Одна группа одного цвета, другая другого, третья третьего. И в итоге, когда они все, so, все выходит в печать, картинки получаются очень цветные, красочные. So the material world is a combination of three modes, goodness, passion and ignorance. And from these three modes, <coughs> then 8,400,000 8, different species of life. И материальный мир это комбинация трех гум материальной природы, и из этих комбинаций появляется 8 миллионов 400 тысяч форм жизни. So we get a particular body according to our desire, according to our qualification and desire. Мы получаем наше тело в соответствии с нашей квалификацией, нашими желаниями. Например, некоторые формы жизни, они больше находятся под влиянием гуда благости, например, коровы или лебеди. The cow, they take some grass and they give milk. Например, коровы, они едят траву и дают молоко. They don't go and hunt other animals. Они не охотятся на других животных. They just simply eat some grass. Они просто едят траву. And similarly, the swan likes to be in the clear water with the lotus flowers. А лебеди любят находиться в чистой воде, где растут цветы лотоса. They keep themselves clean. Они поддерживают себя в чистоте. And then you've got animals more in the mode of passion. You know, he, they're more violent. They're, they hunt other creatures. И, и есть животные, которые в основном находятся в гуме страсти. Они uh, находятся на других животных, поедают кого-то. And you've got animals more in the mode of ignorance. So just very uncontrolled in all of their activities. They have no kind of control, no regulation, unrestricted, like the pig. They can eat anything, they can mate anywhere, they have no control. And the same when we look at other species, we look at the, the aquatics, the creatures in the sea, you'll see also a combination of goodness, passion and ignorance. Even trees, you get some trees are very pious, they give flowers and fruits. Даже деревья, некоторые из них очень благочестивы, и они дают цветы и фрукты. Other trees can give poison. А другие дают яд. More in the mode of ignorance. Они больше находятся в гуме невежества. So the mater this material world is, everything is influenced by the three modes of nature. И в этом материальном мире все находится под влиянием гум материальной природы. We read in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes how food is of the different modes of nature. Food. The food. Ah, in the Bhagavad Gita, God, Krishna, describes fish in three modes of material nature. Right? You eat food which is very spicy and very hot and very oily. This is the mode of passion. And when you eat very hot food, very spicy or very hot, it's the mode of passion. And you eat animal food, animal flesh, and food which is being decomposed and putrid, that's in the mode of ignorance. Right? The Chinese people, they like this thing, you know, this cho dofu, this is bean curd, which is very smelly, you know, yeah. horrible smell. <laughs> И китайцы очень любят такое блюдо, как чо тофу. Это очень так едкий такой запах это блюдо имеет. Smells like socks after you haven't washed them for six weeks, you know? Это блюдо пахнет как носки, которые вы не стирали шесть недель. And then, uh, then you've got fruit, even fruits. You've got fruits like uh, what's that? 
What's that fruit? Um, what's the name again? Man? It smells really terrible, but it tastes very good. Есть такой фрукт, который очень приятен на вкус, но пахнет просто ужасно. They have this one fruit. Как он называется? Durian. Durian, yes, right. Durian. You like it? Right. <laughs> Some people like it very much. Banuswami likes it very much. На некоторые люди очень любят этот фрукт. Бануслами его очень любят. But it smells terrible. <laughs> they won't let you take it in the airplane. If you carry it enough, they won't let you take it into the flight. А то есть если вы возьмете этот фрукт и попробуйте пронести его в самолет, они вас в самолет не возьмут. The smell is so bad, all the passengers will complain. Потому что запах настолько ужасный, что все пассажиры приходят в беспокойство. But it tastes delicious. Но на вкус он очень приятный. So I like the combination, the modes of nature. Это вот сочетание гун природы. So this material energy is uh, made up of these three modes of nature, and it's all under the direction of the Supreme <coughs> Lord Krishna. И материальная природа создала эти три гуны, и они всегда находятся под руководством Господа Кришны. He creates all of these different conditions, different varieties. Just to satisfy the desires of all the living entities. И он создает эти различные варианты, различные комбинации этих гун только ради того, чтобы удовлетворить желания живых существ. Because we desire to enjoy in all these different ways. Потому что мы хотим наслаждаться всеми этими различными Some people, some people desire to enjoy like a pig. Некоторые люди хотят наслаждаться как свиньи. Even. There's a, it said one time Indra got cursed by his guru to become a pig. And so he was in the pig body and he got fat every day eating the pig food. So after some time the guru came and he told he said, now you should come back. Now you stop being a pig, you come back. But Indra said, no, I'm okay here. I like it here. Every day they bring big buckets of food for me. And I have so many family here, I have so many wives and children. All my pig wives and my pig children. I don't want to leave. I like it here. So then the guru said, okay, you wait, just wait. So he went to get the butcher and the butcher came with the big knife. And he said, oh, where's the big fat pig? <laughs> so that was Indra. He was the biggest, fattest pig. <laughs> so the butcher said, yeah, let me get that one. <laughs> so Indra said, oh, no, 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 take me, no, take me back. <laughs> so the material energy is so powerful that whatever condition we're in, we think it's very nice. Mm. Sometimes we take people from North China, take them to the, the hot, to India, to the hot pl to in the summer. They say, "Oh, it's so hot! Oh, terrible!" But they never complain about the winter. Although the winter is so cold in North China. They, they tolerate. 
But when it gets hot, some other place, they go some other place, it gets hot, oh, unbearable, we cannot tolerate. And the people who come from the hot place, they go to the cold place, they, oh, so cold, oh. А люди, которые едут из жаркого места в холодное, говорят, о Боже, как тут холодно. So we become conditioned to whatever condition of life we're living in. И таким образом мы становимся обусловленными теми условиями, в которых мы находимся. This is the nature of the material world that we are put into these different situations because of our qualification. И такова природа материального мира. Он погружает нас в те условия в соответствии с нашей квалификацией. And we had also the desire to be in this particular situation. But we have to change that desire if we want to get out of the material world. Material energy is very hard to get free from. So in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Devi Hesha Gunamai Mama Maya Duratya Durat Dur Durga Durga means a house which is very hard to get out of. И в Бхагавадгите Господь произносит этот стих. И Дурга Дуратья Дурга значит это дом, который очень сложно покинуть. The material world is like that. It's like a prison, hard to get out. И материальный мир именно таков, он как тюрьма, очень сложно выбраться из него. So Krishna gives a solution to get free from this material energy. The Devi Esha Gunamai Mama Maya Duratya Mameva Ye Prapadyante Mayami Tam Tarantite Those who surrender to me, they can cross over. И Кришна дает решение в этом стихе, тот, кто предается мне, тот может пересечь путь. So Sukadeva Goswami is beginning his prayers by describing how Krishna creates this material energy. And he describes Lord, Lord Krishna as uh, the Lord of the inconceivable way. In, his, his, his ways are inconceivable. И он описывает Господа Кришну как того, кто является непостижимым. Кришна does so many things which are surprising, which are, oh, oh, why Krishna did like that? И Кришна делает столько много вещей, которые удивляют нас. Мы задумываемся, о, как это, почему он так сделал? Just like we know, Krishna became the chariot driver. The chariot driver is the the, the low position in the society. Sudra. But Krishna is the Supreme Lord, but he takes the position to be the chariot driver for his devotee, Arjuna. Why would Krishna do like that? Why would, he's, a, he's the Supreme above everyone. He said, there's no truth superior to me. И почему Кришна поступил так? Нет никого выше Ему. Его говорится, что нет выше истины, чем Я. Only Krishna says that. Только Кришна говорит это. Shiva never says. Никто больше не говорит. Durga never says. Дурга никогда такое не говорит. Only Krishna says, I am the highest, the supreme truth. И только Кришна говорит, Я высшая истина. But he becomes the chariot driver of his devotee. That is inconceivable. How could Krishna? He can do this. And Krishna is known as the Makanchor, the butter thief. Makan. Makan means butter. And chor means thief. So Krishna is worshipped, he's glorified for being the thief, one who stole the butter. Right? Damodar Lila. Mother Mother Yashoda was churning the butter and Krishna is stealing the butter from the home of the gopis. 
и в Дамадаралиле Матушка Ишода разбивала масло, а Господь Кришна воровал его. And when he steals the butter, then he gives it away to the monkeys. И когда он крал это масло, он отдавал его обезьянам. The gopis get upset that oh you give the monkeys this butter oh my god you naughty boy you're very bad. И гопи жаловались о боже ты отдал наше масло обезьянам что то за мальчишка такой. Why does Krishna do like this? Does he have to steal anything? Почему Кришна поступал так? He is the нужно было воровать. He is the proprietor of everything. Everything belongs to him. Why does he need to steal the butter? Он владелец всего, все принадлежит ему. Зачем ему воровать масло? It's creating more pleasure for his devotees. И эти вещи они создают больше удовольствия, дают больше удовольствия его преданным. It's also said that Krishna steals the butter to give it to the monkeys because the monk Krishna has a debt to pay to the monkeys. И говорится, что Кришна воровал это масло для того, чтобы отдать обезьянам, потому что у него был долг по отношению к ним. И в своем прошлом воплощении Кришна был Господом Рамачандра. И обезьяны помогли Господу Рамачандре найти Ситу. И обезьяны помогли ему в борьбе против Раддана. И обезьяны помогали Господу в битве с Раманой. So Krishna has a debt to pay. He's very grateful to the monkeys for helping him. И Кришна был очень благодарен этим обезьян обезьянам за помощь, поэтому отплачивал им свой долг, отдавал долг. So that's why he gave all the butter to the monkeys. Поэтому он отдавал все масло обезьянам. But he was also enjoying the lila with the gopi. Но также он наслаждался этой лилой с гопи. They, they take, they take, they feel. He like Krishna likes to see them get angry at him. He enjoys that relationship. И он наслаждался этими отношениями, когда гопи злились на него, ему нравилось это. If when people only worship Krishna, then that everyone gives so much respect, it becomes boring after a while. Когда люди кому-то выказывают почтение, каждый день поклоняются ему, через какое-то время это становится скучно. So he enjoys being the little child who gets the gopis angry. И поэтому он наслаждается как маленький ребенок, который которому нравится злить гопи. And gopis complain about him. И гопи жалуются на него. That this boy Krishna is always doing so many bad things. Этот мальчик Кришна всегда делает какие-нибудь гадости. So he stole the butter, and then he is also called Ranchor. Ranchor means one who leaves the battlefield. И также Кришна называют Ранчором тем, кто покинул поле битвы. So it's not very nice to be known as a thief, is it? But Krishna is worshipped as the butter thief. И не очень приятно быть тем, кому поклоняются как воришки, но тем не менее Кришна вор масла. And it's also very disgraceful to leave the battlefield and to be called rancher. И еще хуже быть тем, кто покинул поле битвы и быть ранчором. The Shatriya, the great kings, they should never leave the battlefield. Кшатри и великие цари они никогда не должны покидать поле битвы. They would rather die than leave the battlefield. It's the Shatriya culture that they will either win the battle or they will die on the battlefield. But Krishna is called, one of Krishna's names is Ranchor. Ranchor means one who left the battlefield. There's a temple in India, a famous temple in Gujarat state called Ranchor. Have you been there? And in India, in Gujarat, there is a very famous Ranchor. So Krishna is worshipped for leaving the battlefield. And Krishna is worshipped for leaving the battlefield. It happened when Krishna was residing in Mathura. 
when Krishna was residing in Mathura, a demon named uh, Kalayavana, Kalayavana was coming to attack Mathura. And at the same time, Jarasandha was coming with his army. So at that time, Krishna decided that uh, he moved all the people from Mathura, he moved them to Dwarka. And Krishna himself, he went into the battlefield, but he went right across the battlefield. He went, he didn't fight, he went right through the battlefield and he went away, away up, 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 up and he went away up, up, up on a hill, up a mountain. So this demon Kalayavana was coming, he wanted to fight Krishna. So he ran after Krishna. But he could never catch Krishna. Because Krishna cannot be caught by any without devotion. Only devotion can conquer Krishna. This Kalayavana was a demon. He had, he had no devotion. So Krishna was walking, 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 and the demons running, running, he couldn't catch Krishna. And Krishna went all the way up, up, up a mountain, and he walked into a cave, and the demon came running after him. And that was when Kalayavana saw the person on the floor sleeping and he thought it was Krishna and he kicked him. And then the, thing, the person woke up, opened his eyes and burned Kalayavana catch. So Krishna didn't want to kill Kalayavana. He let this other man kill Kalayavana. Because if Krishna would kill him, he would get liberation. So Krishna let this other man kill Anyway, Krishna left the battlefield, so he got the name Ranchor. It's inconceivable that why Krishna would leave the battle. You know, Krishna could just stand, stand and fight him, but Krishna chose, decided to. And Krishna did things like steal all the clothes of the gopis. The gopis were all bathing one morning and Krishna came and he, he took all their clothes. And he told all the gopis, if you want to get your clothes back, you have to come and you have to come and get them from me. So Krishna, Krishna did this to fulfill to fulfill the desires of the gopis. Because all the gopis wanted Krishna for their husband. So Krishna wanted to satisfy their desires. So Krishna stole their clothes. Not only did he steal their clothes, he stole the hearts of his devotees. Right? He stole butter, he stole clothes, and he stole the hearts of his devotees. So Krishna is really a big thief. Why are we worshipping this thief? So many things about Krishna are inconceivable. And so very difficult for people to understand Krishna. And Lord Brahma also says in his prayers, Brahma Samhita, he says, 
Vedeshu Durlabam, very hard to understand Krishna from the Vedas. But Adurlabam Atma Bhakto, very easy to understand Krishna by devotion. So we want to understand Krishna, we have to hear about Krishna from the proper place, from the proper line, through the proper channel, from the disciplic succession. If we don't hear from the right place, we'll definitely be confused, we'll be lost. We see so many people read the Bhagavad Gita and they give their own interpretation of the Bhagavad Gita. One big professor of Sanskrit in China, he wrote a commentary on the Bhagavad Gita. And he said Krishna is uh, black, the black, what is it, the black god or the black something, the black, the black god. He said Krishna was sinful because he encouraged off this battle of Kurukshetra as so many people died, he could have avoided the battle. So he criticized Krishna. But criti Krishna criticizes him. Krishna says, Namam duskriti no mudha prapajyante naradama. Krishna said, those, those who are foolish and, and uh, whose knowledge is stolen by illusion and who are of the nature, who are uh, the nature of donkeys, then they don't surrender to me. Krishna describes four kinds of people who never surrender to him. Right? Mutha, people like a donkey, foolish animal. Then the lowest of men, Naradama. You may have a good birth, but they don't take advantage of their birth to surrender to Krishna. Somebody may be born in an, a good family, very pious, very religious, Brahman even, but they don't surrender to Krishna. Other people, Maya, maya Aparita Jnana, Knowledge stolen by illusion. They try to understand the scriptures by their own intelligence and they completely go completely off, all wrong. And then you've got people who are like atheists or blasphemers who they cannot understand anything. So these people never surrender to Krishna. So they, they, they condemn Krishna, they criticize Krishna, Krishna criticizes them. And they'll take birth in demonic species, birth after birth. So we want to understand Krishna. Krishna gives the key in the Bhagavad Gita. I said that only by devotion can it be understood. Therefore Maharaj Parikshit was very happy when Sukadeva Goswami came because he knew Sukadeva Goswami to be a devotee. 
Прохлада Махарадж был очень счастлив, когда... Not Prahlad, Parikshit. Все, Parikshit, sorry. Parikshit был очень счастлив, когда пришел Шукадева Гасвами, потому что он знал, что Шукадева великий преданный Господа. So, we want to understand Krishna, we have to understand Krishna from the devotees, not from anybody else. И если мы хотим понять Кришну, мы должны понять это от великого преданного, не от кого-то другого. Because Krishna is just so inconceivable. Потому что Кришна настолько непостижим. Atashri, there's a verse, Atashri Krishna Navadi Nabavad Gram Indriyani. Sevan Mukhe Jiva Do Swayam Eva Spurakiva. Said Krishna cannot be understood by the material sense. Just like Mother Yashoda, she heard Krishna had been eating dirt. So she told Krishna, Have you been eating dirt? Krishna said, No, Balaram's not telling the truth. I haven't been eating dirt. Как матушка еще до однажды услышала, что Кришна есть землю, и она подошла к нему и спросила, ты ел землю? Он сказал, нет. Баларама сказал тебе неправду, я не ел землю. So then mother Yashoda said, open your mouth, let me see. И мама Ишода сказала, ну-ка, открой свой рот, я посмотрю. And when Krishna opened his mouth, mother Yashoda saw the whole universe in the mouth of Krishna. И когда Кришна открыл свой рот, матушка Ишода увидела всю вселенную во рту у Кришны. So Krishna is just inconceivable. How could, the, how could the whole universe be in Krishna's mouth? Krishna's belly is the abode of the entire universe. But Mother Yashoda could take a belt and, or a string and could tie it around his waist. So it's inconceivable if you try to understand Krishna with the material senses. But he reveals himself when we do some service. Sevan Mokehe Jiva Do Swayam Evas Purati. Particularly when we use the tongue. We use the tongue to begin to chant and to taste prasada, and in this way, gradually, we can, Krishna is revealed. If we do chanting, we, we, we're beginning to do service. Prabhupada said, a Krishna consciousness begins when we start to chant the holy name. So we, we, when we meet new people, we encourage them, we teach them how to chant. We teach them the Maha Mantra. We go to the yoga studios, meet all the yogis, teach them how to chant. Get them to say the mantra. And this way their Krishna consciousness is beginning. Now of course, if they then if they begin to chant regularly, then they can advance. Lord Chaitanya was asked. How to recognize a devotee. So Lord Chaitanya, anyone who chants the holy name one time, he's a devotee. Then after some time devotees came again and they asked Lord Chaitanya, how can we recognize a devotee? And Lord Chaitanya said, those people who are chanting the holy name regularly, they are devotees. And then again, after some time, they came back and again they asked the same question, how to recognize devotees. 
И спустя некоторое время преданные снова пришли к Господу Чайтане и спросили, как можно узнать преданного. Lord Chaitanya said that person simply by seeing him makes other people chant. Then he is a Just like when people see devotee, well, they can see devotee with the tilak and the, you know, dressed like a devotee with neck beads and, and then they can understand, oh, oh, Hare Krishna. Это подобно тому, когда люди видят человека в вайшнавской одежде, с конхималами, они с тилакой, они понимают, о, вайшнав. О, я не знал, преданный здесь тоже очень хорошо. Таким образом, мы должны пытаться вдохновить людей, повторять свое имя. Это наша обязанность, как преданных, давать сознание Кришне. И иногда даже просто видя нас, они понимают, что преданные. Иногда люди так эффулгентны, они не видят They may not see any of the devotional thing, but they just see that the, the effulgence are so bright that oh, Hare Krishna. Sometimes people are surprised. We think maybe Hare Krishna people use some special soap. Some special soap. <laughs> no, we just chant Hare Krishna. In this way we become bright and happy, effulgent. Okay, any questions? Говорится, что одно из качеств Брамана – простота, да? Ну, и Вайшнава также. С чем она проявляется? Потому что есть понимание такое, что простота есть такое, такое простота хуже воровства, то есть наивность. Вот в чем проявляется именно простота Вайшнава, Брамана, как хуже у Павла, что именно простота? Well, a Brahman is simple in the sense that he is satisfied in whatever situation Krishna places him. He does not have demands. Oh, I need this. Oh, no, I can't have that. I've got to have this. Well, Brahmana is like that. He is satisfied in his position, whatever place Krishna gives, whatever situation Krishna places. И браманы именно таковы, они удовлетворены любой ситуации, в которую помещается Кришна. Брамана is not anxious for any kind of material develop material he doesn't want to improve his material situation. И Браман он не хочет совершенствовать ту ситуацию материальную, в которой он находится. Because a brahmana should be on the spiritual path, he's working for his own, for for the spiritual development. Not he's not worried about his material. Потому что браман хочет находиться на духовном пути, он работает ради того, чтобы совершенствовать свои свое духовное развитие, а не материальное. So in that way, it appears so he's very simple. Поэтому кажется, что он внешне очень прост. Prabhupada used to say simple living and high thinking. 
Прабхупада говорил, простая жизнь возвышенное мышление. That is the mode of goodness. And the Brahman is meant to be the symbol of the mode of goodness. So, trying to be a, you know, being a Brahman, it doesn't mean that you have to be artificially renounced, that you have to reject everything, but we accept whatever is provided by the great depression. We can use everything for the service of Krishna. You know, when Prabhupada came to Hong Kong, the devotees put him in a, in a they arranged a big hotel with a penthouse suite in a big hotel. And they brought him in a big car, the most expensive car. So when the reporters came to interview Prabhupada, they asked him, they said that you're a holy man and you live like this. But Prabhupada said to him, if I lived under a tree, you would not come to see me. <laughs> Prabhupada was not attached to these things. But he could use them in Krishna's service. Wasn't, and it wasn't going to be, you know, it wasn't like he's going to use them for a long time. <coughs> One devotee tells how he was to travel with Prabhupada and decided they wanted to make put Prabhupada in the business class on the airplane. Put yeah. him in business class with a big seat, you know, and luxury service. <coughs> But Prabhupada explained, he said, we don't need these big seats. I'm not so big that I have to have a big seat. And he said, I don't eat their food or take their drinks. Prabhupada always carried his own food. He never had any. <coughs> so why we would waste Krishna's money? Mm. And then when Prabhupada went to Bhubaneswar, he was showing devotees there, he was showing devotees how to live there simply in the mud hut. <coughs> And Prabhupada showed him, he said, he said, you don't need to buy soap. He said, you just take the mud here. He said, this mud is very good. And you, you can smear it on your body. He said, it has chemicals in the earth and the soil. It is good for the skin. You put it on your body. You don't need soap. <laughs> Simple living. But 
I said, if you surrender to Krishna, it's very easy to get through the mortal nature. Without surrendering to Krishna, then you'll struggle. We try to get free, but without taking shelter of Krishna, we cannot get free. Мы будем пытаться стать свободными, но без принятия предыдущего Кришны мы не сможем это сделать. И когда мы начинаем повторять и танцевать, вот это есть предание Кришны. Нет никаких противоречий. There are innumerable empowered incarnations. They are also mentioned in the revealed scriptures. Such incarnations are directly as well as indirectly empowered. When they are directly empowered, they are called incarnations. But they are indirectly empowered, they are called vibhutis. So, uh, this, is, this is confused me. Uh, there, there is incarnations, uh, direct incarnations. There are incarnations. Indirect incarnations, uh, who is an empowered, there are also incarnations. And there is another incarnation who is empowered, but not the indi but indirectly, Vibhuti. So what is the difference between all these incarnations? Итак, Итак, Прабхупада в комментарии пишет, что есть, есть прямые инкарнации Господа, есть непрямые. И, и непрямые делятся на прямо уполномоченные и косвенно уполномоченные. Прямо, кос, прямо уполномоченные называются тоже инкарнациями, так же, как и прямые воплощения. Даже они тоже называются прямыми воплощениями. А в чем тогда разница между теми воплощениями и этими воплощениями? А есть еще косвенно уполномоченные воплощения, которые называются Витхути. Вообще, какая разница между всеми этими воплощениями? So vibhutis, they're described in the Bhagavad Gita in the 10th chapter. It's called vibhuti yoga. The opulences of the Absolute. What? The opulences of the Absolute. All right, Krishna, and then Krishna mentions so many different, that I'm the sound in ether, I am ability in man, I am heat in the fire, I'm the light of the sun and the moon, I'm the syllable Om and the Vedic mantras. I am the, of rivers, I am the Ganges. Of beasts, I am the lion. Of devotees, I am Prahlad. Right, Krishna goes on many different things. These are all vibhutis. So Krishna appears, there. Krishna empowers uh, the different personalities. They're representing Krishna. Of, of mountains, I am Meru. Of immovable things, I am the Himalayas. Among, among men, I am the monarch. So this is all, these are Krishna's vibhutis. Krishna is describing how he appears in this material world. But Krishna also has his direct incarnations. No, Krishna также есть свои прямые инкарнации. They're coming from the spiritual world. So, like Lord Kapila, and, uh, and then <coughs> Nishingade, <coughs> Vamanade, <coughs> Matsya, Kurma. These are all the Lord's incarnations. 
Oh, yeah, they come for different reasons. Some some are yoga avatars and some are lila avatars. Mm. Some are uh, Shaktyavesha avatars empowered. Yeah, well, it might be indirectly, it might be directly, I don't know. Could also be directly. Parasuram. He's an avatar. There's so many avatars, so many incarnations. And so many vibhutis. Krishna says himself at the end of the tenth chapter that there's no need of all this detailed knowledge, Arjuna. You don't need this knowledge because with a single fragment of myself I pervade and support the entire creation. Krishna pervades the entire creation in the form of So this is Purusha Avatar. Right? Purusha Avatar. Also Krishna's incarnation. Directly. For the purpose of creation. Uh, and about Vyasadeva, he's also an inc uh, incarnation of Krishna. He's direct or indirect, what is his position? Vyasadeva? Vyasadeva. Yeah, he is. Well, <laughs> I'd have to. Th How does he term Vyasadeva? There are different, so many different categories of incarnations. Sometimes we say he's Shaktyavesha avatar. He was empowered to write books. Put all the Vedic knowledge into writing. Somebody asked me about this, and I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't I would, answer. I would say indirect incarnation. Yeah. I don't know. It's a Puranic, something from the Puranas. I don't know if it's a true story or not. There are many of these kind of things told in the Puran. Yeah, they said he went in, the parrot went into the womb, into the <coughs> mouth of the wife of Vyasad, it came out of the womb as Sukadeva Goswami. Yes. Possible. Yeah. Everything is possible. <laughs> right? 
ni är uppe, här ligger det. Unless you can defeat them, but in Kali Yuga people don't like, they don't admit they're defeated. If you try to debate or discuss philosophically with them, they won't admit that you're right. So it's a waste of time to try to argue. So better just to go away. And don't speak to them again. In the universe, this particle destruction, not the whole destruction, just particle destruction of the universe. At the end of the of Brahma's days. Yes, in the ah. end of Brahma's day. At the end of Brahma's yes. day. Just uh, some story with Svayvasvata Mahadev. Well, at the end of Brahma's day, there's a partial destruction, right? On the lower planets of humanity. How does how does he do it? Yes. Maybe the it, sometimes there's a flood, a great flood. Markandeya Rishi, there was a great sage called Markandeya Rishi. He got a benediction to live through the night of Brahma. Lord Shiva and his wife Parvati, they saw this mark in their Rishi and they thought he's a very good soul. So the, the, he, he, they, give, they said, we'll give you blessing. So he asked them, let me have a long life and let me live through the night of Brahma. <laughs> So, so it was described how there was a great flood and yeah, the, whole, the whole planet was devastated. And Mark and Dea Rishi was left in the ocean. He was the, Mark and Dea Rishi was left to float in the ocean. He was just in the ocean and there was, you know, it was very stormy, there were big waves and very turbulent. And there were big aquatic creatures, horrible, terrifying creatures in the ocean. 
So he had a terrible time. He had to live through the night in Brahma. There was no food. There was no shelter. He was in the ocean the whole time. So you live through a night of Brahma. That's what it's like. That's what you have to put up with. Better to die. Well, Kalki comes at the end of the Kali Yuga. It has to be the end of the Kali Yuga. All right. At the end of Kali Yuga, all the people are living underground, and you know, and there's, there's, of course, people are very irreligious because it's Kali Yuga. There's no religiosity. And so Lord Kalki comes and kills everyone. And then the great sages who are residing in the Himalayas, they come down to begin again Tattva Yuga. Vyasadeva is in the Himalayas. So he comes down at the, at the end of Kali Yuga for the next Satya Yuga. So Kali Yuga, we see already it's degrading very fast, so it will get much worse as Kali Yuga goes on. There will be so many problems, so much destruction. People will eat flesh, human flesh. They're already some places already eating human flesh. So it will become very unbearable for everyone. People well, they said people, because the burden of taxation will be so great, people will all go and live in the forest. They'll have to go and live in the forest and in the jungle because they, they cannot pay taxes. So the governments will ask so much tax. You can read predictions for the age of Kali in the 12th canto Srimad Bhagavatam. Describe how, what will happen as Kali Yuga progresses. So there's 427,000 years remaining. Yes. 
Better to go back to Godhead. Don't just stay around. Okay? So thank you very much for your association. Very happy I could come here, spend a few days with you. So we encourage you to keep up your preaching and association. Be happy in Krishna consciousness. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.